Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where Jeb is coming home. Uh, you remember last episode we did the start, the biome bouncer went out, got some like uh, science, and we learned all the restrictions that come with that vehicle. Uh, we then landed Alexander's Pride um, and started transferring all the science and fuel across to Alexander's Pride for this mission right here. Um, so we're getting ourselves into a decent suborbital -or arc. Um, it's only suborbital because all we're doing is getting ourselves round to the other side of the planet where Kerbin is, and then we're just going to thrust for all we're worth. Uh, we're doing it as low down as possible, cause Oberth effect, and yeah, I think that just about covers everything that we're doing at this particular point in time. Uh, so yeah, I'm messing around with uh, maneuver nodes so we can get ourselves into a, a, a low Kerbin approach. Um, um, hopefully low enough to take us through the atmosphere so that we don't have to worry about well anything really we just we just let it do its thing maybe pop the parachutes at the appropriate time but that's in a bit first we're gonna fly our way round Minmus and get to this maneuver nude that's about 10 minutes away but with the wonder of time acceleration we are very nearly here um, now as always I leave myself far too much of a buffer to be messing around and uh, finding out what's going on. But nay bother, with a little bit of pointing around, uh, we can then start thrusting. Uh, bearing in mind that I have got like the smallest little inline uh, engine on the back of this thing. But that's alright, because we're in, out in deep orbit and it only takes the smallest of pushes to make that sort of things happen. Right, so uh, despite the MUN encounter, uh, everything is going well. I mean, the MUN is on the other side of the, my orbit, thankfully, so that's alright. We're going to crash into Kerbin. When I say crash, I mean we're, we're going to skillfully aero brake, uh, float down on parachutes and land without any problem, of course, as as all return missions go, surely. Like, no, no one ever smashes up their ship on going back home. So, using my favourite feature of time acceleration, we watch the wonder of the orbital ballet that is the moon going around Kerbin until we get down to uh, about 400,000 kilometres. Uh, I, I would like to bring us in a lot closer. 400,000 metres, sorry, 400,000 kilometres is quite a difference. Um, and then we're going to come down and graze the atmosphere. Um, I, I'd really like to, 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 to do this a lot quicker, so what we're going to do is, you're just going to have to take my word that the reaction wheels kept everything in line, just like that, down to this beautiful, beautiful landing. Uh, we're less than 100 metres off the floor here. As you know, I do find this the most boring bit, so I thought we'd skip the whole lot and just watch the actual landing because this this went pretty cool actually you know that um standing upright like i know i've got my landing legs extended but you know surely i should have like toppled over or something that was my biggest fear with a uh, water landing anyway so a massive 262 points of science there uh, not much for the dual science capabilities of the uh, biome bouncer but then again i did redo a biome we were in for all sorts of reasons that i described last episode so that means we need to go and buy some um, some science bits, right? Indeed it does. And looking around, um, what I actually end up doing is buying the uh, solar panels. I was tempted by the extra science and I, I'm thinking that I really should have done that, but power is key to almost every single one of my flight um, uh, mission plans. And I also went and bought a whole load of plane stuff because I've not done any planes yet and that's probably going to be my next mission uh, maybe after I've built the base because I am quite heavily invested in this base. Now, right now I am trying to put a science uh, module up um, with the, the minimum space, obviously, because, you know, I need to, to clean out the, the biome bouncer. But you'll notice a whole load of weird stuff going on with my, like, symmetry controls and stuff like that. That is because I have put editor extensions mod on, the editor extensions mod on, which gives us all sorts of functionality, including things like uh, 50 times radial symmetry which is amazing uh, but more importantly for me the ability to switch between um, space plane hangar and uh, VAB uh, symmetry modes uh, just with the press of the button which is absolutely awesome now because of the new mod I had an absolute mare of a time trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this so what we're going to do is, we're just, like, already I've put on screen the rough idea of what I want. There's monoprop to move around, there's the science module, and there is a shed load of um, uh, power, uh, solar power plants, so that I can power the, the science lab. 
Um, so we're going to jump a little bit further ahead and show you this cheeky chappy. Welcome to the naming ceremony where we're trying to figure out what we're going to call this thing. Um, now this actually has two faces, one on the front and one on the back. Um, and this isn't the best video for showing you that. I'm hope hopefully you will see that by by the time I will I will try and point that out. But so because of that, we've called it schizophrenic deity. Now you have no idea how bad I am at spelling and how hard that word is to spell like deity what um and like schizophrenic was hard enough but at least it's kind of phonetic deity no 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 idea and that's why the tagline there is that's really really hard to spell and thankfully now i just gave you a little look, there we go faces face one face two um now we're going to try and figure out how to attach some great big rockets to this um i go through all sorts of different iterations um, and eventually what I end up doing is just kind of sticking it on its end. I tried to do all sorts of funny radial stuff, but it just it kept on going really strange. Um, so this is what I actually ended up with. Um, it's kind of just the standard lifter underneath uh, with it on top. And then I stuck some extra fuel cans on the side so that we could uh, do any sort of interplanetary maneuvering that we needed to do. Uh, as it ended up, once again, I was being far, far over generous with the fuel. So much so that here we are in Minmus, uh, in Minmus orbit, indeed planning to land, and I've still got the, the massive launcher stage behind me. Uh, so I'm like, let's get rid of that, we're preparing to land. Turns out that was a massive mistake, because that's now put a massive hunk of uh, debris in, in my uh, orbital trajectory, which is not great. Um, I, I do, that does um, appear again in a later episode. But that's not a worry for now. The worry for now is getting this hulking great big thing down uh, to the landing zone. Now you'll notice that um, after mucking around, I had to put a probe uh, probe body, the, the Sputnik type one, on the, the front of this thing. Now unfortunately, because of my swapping back and forth between the space plane hangar and the VAB, I've actually ended up putting it on upside down. Now out in orbit, it's not, not a great problem. Um, and that, in fact, I'm going to wait and we'll, we'll see what the great problem is. Just know that in orbit, that's not a great problem. Okay, so the familiar view of this mountain and my landing site have come into view. The familiar view have come into view? Yeah, 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 that's exactly what's happened. So now we're going to uh, perform this small maneuvering burn because I worked out with the maneuver nudes and that this one should put us down straight on top of it. I may have forgotten to factor in the planet spin, but that, like, in the grand scheme of things, that's that that's not amazingly difficult to, to overcome. So here we go. As always, the results of this burn will tell me how easy it's going to be getting from whatever my final landing zone is to the place where I want it in the base. Obviously, the closer I have this trajectory to like being the, the, the spot I want it in the base, the less flying I have to do on the surface of Minmus. Uh, and that's just good all around, right? No, no one really likes mucking around on, on surfaces of planets too much because like the floor is right there. And if you get it wrong with the floor, the floor doesn't really give you room for argument, it just kind of takes its damage and there you go. Okay, so next up is we turn on the lights. I think this is an amazing lighting system. It's not quite as good as I intended because I did have the like port and starboard lights and then I figured out that I wasn't going to be flying it like that, but I left the lights where they were anyway. What I should have done is taken them off and put them on the, the sides, but you know, whatever, there we go. And it's about here that I realised that the whole vessel is upside down. Uh, it's a, a might inconvenient, but at the moment it's alright, I just work with my nav ball upside down, you know, an instrument only landing, this, this should be fine, right? Indeed, for the entirety of my downwards arc, it goes amazingly well, and even for these tiny little control burns here, well, tiny little control burns, I, I go a little bit overzealous when I do things like this, but even with these control burns here, I'm having absolutely no problem with figuring out how to use the nav ball in this current configuration. So after I think my trajectories are good un, and I've got like basically my prograde and my, my target markers set up, my retrograde and my target mar markers lined up, I'm like, hey, let's just throw my throw my, my stuff away. This this must all be going fine. I'm, I'm all perfectly lined up. Let's get ready for a, uh, a launch configuration. Landing configuration. Of course, what I'm actually doing is, is landing. Now, this is where I'm beginning to notice things aren't quite as easy as I think, because now I've got to try and do everything with translational controls. And so like up is down and down is up uh, left and right is still all the same but back and forwards are different as well so yeah it, it, it all suddenly 
became very much a, a task that I wasn't entirely certain I could uh, live up to. Not to mention that I was actually falling to the ground at a, a lot faster rate than I thought I was, and it's taking an awful lot of monoprop for me to even begin to slow myself down. Uh, I'm still falling at five meters per second when I'm like, hey, you know what, that's, that's quite good, let's start easing off a little bit here. But I still have no idea how far away the floor is, as is always the case. Uh, I, I really wish there was some sort of uh, radar altitude readout that I could put up on my on my screen there. But anyway, here we come for touchdown. Hey, that was alright. Yeah, look at that. I did, I did okay, yeah? And I say okay, I mean it's still like one and a bit kilometres to go, but hey, what's a thousand metres? I'm just, I'm just gonna like push up and, and fly over, right? Of course, Let, let's give that a go right now. Um, so, straight away, the camera turns upside down when I put it in chase cam. Now, that's, that's okay. I thought that maybe if I if I got myself orientated with the vessel, I could, I could be be one with the zen of the upside down world. I was just like, oh, it's okay, I, I'm spatially aware. I, I, can, I can learn to do these things. Um, it turns out, no, if you're spatially aware, you're spatially aware in these dimensions, not other ones. No matter how much I tried to turn my head round the idea, all that just kept on happening was little things like this. Um, now I was like, okay, it's fine, we'll just bring it under control. Oh no, 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 bring it under control's worse. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? So I, I decided that maybe upside down is possibly the way to fly it. Um, so we're in chase, chase mode like this, so the camera is upside down from what the controls are but this feels more intuitive so I, i'm trying to to, to use the, the the controls like this now the problem is this has put all my vulnerable stuff which i had put on top because the landing legs are underneath so it's put all my vulnerable equipment like the solar panels and my um my, my antennas and things like that on the vulnerable areas which is not ideal when you're flying upside down with a new control system that you've never really got your head around before in a lower um lower gravity environment that you're still not entirely used to because obviously i'm a human i'm used to 1g i'm used to things falling at a certain rate um so yeah i, I personally i think I, I did absolutely wonderful i deserve a small medal for this surely Maybe something made out of a bottle cap, small bit of ribbon, uh, nothing, nothing ostentatious, just, just something shiny. I like shiny things. Um, anyway, enough of my medal wants. We are coming into within a kilometre of our uh, uh, final resting zone, <laughs> and I'm, I'm feeling relatively confident at this point. I'm just like, right, if I just keep tapping myself into the right, uh, into the top of my arc, we should be able to just ride this wave of the full 10 meters per second towards this vessel. Um, without without losing control. Uh, I have eaten through over half my monoprop already, but you know, as with any new flight system, you, you waste half your fuel learning how to fly it. Or at least that was my thought at the time anyway. And if I'm to be honest, it is still my thought right now. I think I did incredibly well on this. So getting down to the last couple of hundred meters, I'm like, right, I should start slowing down now. Uh, slowing down goes well-ish. And there goes my solar panels. Which wasn't great, and I'm just like, oh no, I don't lose, I don't want to lose them all. I don't want to lose them all. Quick, <laughs> right up on the front end. That's that's by far the better because you know if you've lost your solar panels, what's losing the probe body afterwards? A um, little bit disheartened by this. I'm just like, oh well, I've lost half my power. That's not great, um, and I'm having trouble turning over. And by the looks of it, I've broken a lot of my legs, and no one likes broken legs. Um, now I figured out that chase cam was not helping me at this point so I decided to move back to the uh, auto camera auto camera yeah auto focus auto view auto swerve I don't um, and then I see that little angry man back there um, I wasn't up for long enough to show you properly um, and now I'm just like hey can I fix my legs from out here no of course you can't you, you've got to got to use your Kerbal um, so I try and lay lower down as much, many as I can and, and rock round uh, thankfully, two on one side were were operational, so I could rock round and then pop them back out again, and we will just we'll just sit there for a second, I think, catch our breath, find out what's going on, make sure things are okay, um, see which solar panels have actually broken, um, and it turns out all of one side broke, which means that I've still got a bank of four solar panels to 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 play with which is quite nice it's it's far more than the pro body on this needs to run so you know that, that that's all good right so we're gonna leave him over there and we're gonna go um 
uh, extract the biome bouncer from this this current configuration. It, it's a bit of a weird one, like having to get out to to pop the pop the fuel line every time. But you know, uh, I suppose that is how it how I attached it. So that's how I need to get out and un unattach it, detach it, detach it. <laughs> I have to get out and detach it. And now all that's left to do is for Kirk to. Uh, try and control this nicely and get round to the science vessel because at this point I'm like look that everything's within striking range of each other let's just clean up the science and then at least we're at a base point where we can think about um, going out on another science mission as, as that is what we are here for at the moment we're, we're here just to plunder Minmus of all its science um, just so I'm not distracted by that when I'm then thinking about sending my next science mission off to somewhere else. Uh, I was thinking about doing the MUN, um, like stripping the MUN of all its science, but uh, aside from the fact that Scott Manley immediately started doing that the moment I thought about it, so I thought I'd go do something else, um, it would also be more difficult with the Moon's Gravity Well. Um, whereas Minmus is nice and easy, you can send these tiny, tiny vessels up and, and everything works out nicely. So Kirk's getting out doing what he does best, uh, he's connecting one fuel line from one ship to another ship. Um, I, I reckon he just likes dragging these hoses around now, he, he's definitely developed a, a, a talent for it. Uh, and there we go, with all that done we should now be able to start um, cleaning up all the different science bits. For some reason I'm like, hey can Kirk get in there as well? No he can't. Um, so we're just going to have to uh, switch over to our other vessel. If, if I actually get around to doing that, or are we going to move Kirk in first? We're actually going to move Kirk in first. Of course, flying, pa uh, falling past those uh, photovoltaic panels reminded me that I can grab them with the Kerbal Attachment System. Now what I'm going to do, because I have no replacements, I'm just going to leave them there. But I will send some back up, but that's another mission for another time, because right now I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this spectacular mission that we performed today. I will see you next time where we're going for some more science and other things. I'm not sure what those other things will do, but I'm sure they will be fun. Bye! Oh, maybe I should have waited off saying bye for another couple of seconds. Uh, tick, tick, tick. There we go. They're all clean now. Bye!